Welcome back. We're going to be covering a lot of material in this video in a short amount of time. So hold on to what's coming. This is a summary before and after basically of what to expect when you think of sewer liners. This was my very first liner with the guys from Clock Squad here leading the way and doing my on the job training. Throughout this video you may have questions why something was done a certain way as did I and there are many of those methods Clog Squad did that was way more complicated than they needed to be in my opinion so I've adjusted my process to be much more streamlined since the recording of this video. Here we're right in the middle of rolling the liner into the inversion drum and clamping it onto the nozzle in preparation for inflating it into the host sewer pipe. But before all this happens, there's some preparation involved inside the sewer pipe itself. So let's roll back to earlier in the month where I got my camera and carbide chains in here uh, to grind open the clay sewer pipe with a high-speed flexible shaft auger. We'll see her momentarily. So it spins and the chains open up with centrifugal force cutting off the crust and build up and roots which uh, you'll see in a minute. I will go along to each joint with the water running from a faucet or two I'll have it opened back up to full diameter along the whole length. Can't hardly even really see what's going on when the chains are spinning because the movement is actually kind of tossing the camera head around, but uh, you get the point. Here's a particularly gnarly carl ball of roots. I will start the chain spinning just downstream of this blockage and I'll slowly pull the auger back towards the camera and clean the junk out as I move the chains like back and forth to kind of make sure I have all the area covered. And then, as you can see, it cleaned it up nicely and the good thing about this sewer pipe is that it's still sloping downhill without a bad belly or a sagging section and the pipe has basically remained in the same spot as it was installed uh, many decades ago. Perfect candidate for a liner and then I'll go back through it here one last time to double check everything look for any cracks or splits or breaks or separations and there's a whole bunch of them but again the pipes are relatively in the same exact position. We just need to put a new pipe inside of it. And I'll go out to the city main connection and it looks all good overall. Okay, looking good. Let's uh, get back to the project you've been on the edge of your seats about. You can see the guys mixing the epoxy here. Soon uh, he will add the blue colored, the hardener, or part B. I think there's an A and a B, they call it. Get it mixed together really nice, really well. It's really cold out too, so it's taking its sweet time. Makes it much more thicker than it if it was a warmer day out. Then uh, we'll use a nice fancy orange funnel to pour the epoxy into the liner, uh, which we have cut to length previously. So that's the fun part. As he's pouring that in, there is a vacuum pump running right now, uh, sucking out all the air as much as possible, which will help to saturate that epoxy into the liner much better and pull all the air out. Uh, like I said, it's cold out. 
kind of unexpected for April 18th, um, but not uh, unusual for this time of year in Ohio. So it's a catch-22 in that the epoxy takes its sweet time mixing and flowing and saturating into this felt liner, but because it's cold out, the epoxy will take forever to start to cure at this uh, temperature, giving us a lot more time to work with it. Uh, because once it starts to cure, there's no turning back. And if the liner is not in the pipe by then, you're throwing it all out. Yes, I know about UV cure liners. Maybe one day. Uh, so we have to basically massage the epoxy into this liner. Since it's so cold out, it's not uh, going in by itself so well. We have the calibrated rollers at the end of this table, which helps press it in and uh, get a set amount of, uh, of epoxy throughout the whole length of the liner. And you can even see it's snowing out there of all things. So this process took a very long time due to the cold weather. Okay, so once the epoxy is saturated into the liner, this liner is about 90 pounds heavier. So it takes a couple guys to carry it down into the basement. Uh, I've since started to roll it into the inversion drum, top side, and then carry the drum down to the basement all ready to go. Here, spread it out. We can all carry a little bit. Got the whole big crew in here now. Whoa. Right over. Okay. Uh, so we're back to where the video started, rolling the liner into the inversion drum. And maybe you noticed originally I was spraying some mineral oil on the liner to let it slide through itself as it rolls itself inside out or does the inversion thing, as we call it. Uh, next complication is getting this six inch liner through this uh, six by four inch Y which is a, another thing I would have done way differently. But as this one was my very first time, who was I to argue with the pros, right? Uh, eventually we get it, trying a couple different approaches uh, with a guide hose, calibration hose we call it, and then poking it into the clean out opening, kind of messing around, kind of coaxing it into place to get it started. It does slowly invert into the pipe and make its way down to the city connection. But once we get it in, it's all the way under eight foot of dirt, under the street, under the front lawn, a couple trees, the gas line, the water line, a front porch, some nice landscaping, and the house foundation. All were untouched thanks to the technology of this liner system. Um, you might hear a scraping sound so that became another complication. It is a uh, due to a loose set screw on the uh, guide rail that's inside the drum that we didn't catch until the liner was already in the drum. Fortunately it was an easy fix and it's a beautiful drum. It really is. I have no regrets buying this particular drum. We skip forward to the part where he's hooking on the water adapter head to the calibration tube that I missed recording. Uh, it's basically an inner tube to form to the inside of the liner we just inverted into the host pipe. It allows the flow of hot water and presses the liner to the inside of the host pipe. This is another thing I've changed in my process. I have never used this adapter since. 
thanks to the inversion drum having the ability to pump or allow the flow of hot water directly through. Again, way easier method than what we're doing here. The hot water is piped down to the far end of where the liner ends and is pushed back to us and out the adapter head here with some pressure on the calibration tube to keep the liner in place. But yeah, again, I have never used that adapter head since. Uh, since I learned the inversion drum can hook up water to it. Besides, when we're done curing the epoxy, we have to hook this calibration tube back up to the inversion drum so that we can pull the water out of the calibration tube and pump it topside to, to get rid of it. So, so many extra steps here that led me to realize that it was just pointless to do this. Too many cooks. No, good. everybody's getting hungry. Oh. Sure, if you want. You take that apart. Have what? Just my daddy right here. Right. This Home Depot or Menards. I got a um, Harbor Freight across the street. Yeah. Tractor supply, just a little bit down that way. Stones throw away. And then Lowe's and Menards are clear across town, so those are those. Tractor supply, oh man, they would have tons of those. Yep, absolutely. It's like there's a little Krispy Kreme wannabe down the road, too. Something Pats. Cream. Pats. Donuts yeah. and cream. Everybody knows Pats. It, it donuts and cream. It seems like it's one of those places that probably is very popular. Yep. It is. Then we have the water heater set up. Overall, I really like how they put it all together on this rolling cart. And especially the two propane tanks so I can have a backup one ready to go. Plus, of course, these cool... Yep. Hose reels are top notch. We're just feeding it right now. Oh, yeah. Got it. Yeah, so here he's explaining another way of feeding water into the system, which makes more sense to me. So that's something else I've incorporated into my process versus how I was trained here today. And you know the system's full, and you have to turn the all the way down. And the water of the four inch pipe was was um half full so i went in and i saw where it was growing in mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and i mm -hmm. just hit it with the clogged up yeah. i'm like get ready you all right and it went i saw them panic by the manhole <laughs> yep. and it went down to the yep. next manhole went, doo -doo. you can hear it hit every manhole he's on the phone for the city and here we're just wrapping up waiting for the liner to fill with water uh, then we'll turn on the water heater itself and the circulator and let it let them deal quote unquote them. cook the epoxy to set and harden. I've also since changed the way I do the hot water method compared to this. Uh, and uh, I think the gauge is broken, so um, he's hitting it trying to make it work. <laughs> uh, no good. That doesn't matter. I don't use it anyways. Uh, so unfortunately, I did not record any further video of the process. It was just waiting around for like two hours or so until the epoxy hardened. Then we reattached the calibration tube to the inversion drum, like I was saying, and pulled the water out. And then used air pressure to blow it topside and got everything out of the liner. And as you can see here, despite all the challenges of the day, it turned out beautiful. Uh, for which we all breathed a huge sigh of relief. As you can see... Uh, there's a few bumps that's going over slight differences in the elevation, uh, which is no problem at all, but it's done. Out to near the city main and, you know, ready to handle the next 60, 70, 80, I don't know, 100 years of uh, more feces and kitchen grease, right?
pressure or regulated and unregulated, huh? For air, out of water. <laughs> 